Hello and welcome to Midday Update. Coming up are the headlines for the day. Sultan Qaboos port receives Italian cruise ship Ida Cosma. Two mosques of Al Safat and Wadi Bani Khalid, South Al Batana Governorate, are major tourist attractions. Job opportunities galore for Manis and tourism sector. Cambodia and India in talks for direct flights. Istanbul attack, bombing accused arrested according to officials. Prime Minister Modi to brief world leaders on India's evolving priorities at G20 summit. Cristiano Ronaldo says he does not have respect for Eric Ten Hag. South Australia to host nation's first live golf event. Those are the headlines now for the local stories for the day. The Sultan Qaboos port has received the Italian cruise ship Ida Cosma with more than 5,800 tourists on board as part of its tourism program. With the start of the season of receiving cruise ships in the Sultan of Oman and within the framework of the efforts made by the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism and in cooperation with the relevant authorities to turn the tourism movement and consolidate the position of the Sultan of Oman as a leading and distinguished destination for the ship tourism sector in the region, Sultan Kabul Sport received the cruise ship Ida Cosma, which is visiting the region for the first time, carrying more than 5,800 tourists from different countries of the world. In light of the increasing demand from international companies to come to the Sultan of Oman, it is expected that the Omani ports will receive during this season more than 200 trips of various cruise ships and yachts from around the world to Sultan Qaboos port, Khasat port and Salala port. The tourism of cruise ships and luxury yachts is one of the types of attractive tourism because of the importance of this sector in promoting the Sultan of Oman as one of the prominent destinations regionally and globally by attracting international companies that manage international, international ships to dock in the various ports of the Sultanate. This category of tourist contributes to organizing trips and tourism programs for different destinations, thus maximizing the benefit of the local community by contributing to providing a number of job opportunities. The two mosques of Al Safat or Al Salawat mosques in Wadi Bani Kharus in the Vilayat of Al Awabi in the South Al Batana Governorate are a tourist destination for many visitors to the Vilayat. Hayat bin Saif Al Kharusi, an archaeologist, said the following The two mosques are separated by a distance of 10 meters. Between them is a staircase that reaches the underground canal of Falaj Stol, where the depth of the channel is 5.41 meters below ground level. There is a staircase that leads to the underground canal, its roof lined with stone boulders and the walls of the stairs were lined with st large stones. The first Al Safat Mosque is the Northern Mosque. It is a cube in shape built on a rock and a mud and stone platform has been laid to level the ground since the land on which it is built is uneven. The mihrab is 2.2 meters high, consists of five parts and has four windows and it has no external or internal edifice. It has also been maintained in different eras, Al Khurusi added. As to the second Al Safat Mosque, Harith Al Kharusi explained that the mosque is located in the southeast of the first Al Safat Mosque as it was built on the ground and was not built on the rock. Its external shape is close to the first Al Safat Mosque. It is worth noting that the Vilayat of Al Awabi in the South Al Batana Governorate is characterized by many monuments, heritage monuments, and famous Aflaj, which are tourist attractions for many visitors to the villages of the Vilayat. Around 100,000 people are employed in the tourism sector and Omani should make the most of it, the Minister of Heritage and Tourism said on Sunday. Salam bin Mohammed al Maharuki, the Minister of Heritage and Tourism, said around 100,000 jobs are available but the number of Omanis working in the tourism sector stands between 15,000 and 16,000. This means there is a large number of jobs available in the sector for Omanis, he said. He said the Ministry is working on several ambitious projects including a new version of National History Museum and the Naval History Museum in the Vilayat of Sur. He said the tourism ministry is working in tandem with the labor ministry and other partners and is conscious about bringing in real change in the sector to provide a large number of job opportunities. The Sultan ranks among the developed countries in terms of protection and sustainability of its rich cultural heritage, Al Maharuki said. He added that the Ministry of Heritage and Culture was one of the first institutions established since the New Renaissance and its record during the past five decades in providing employment, protecting the architectural heritage of the Sultanate and recording of ancient Omani history through archaeological surveys and excavations has been no, nothing short of enviable, which has aroused the curiosity of explorers and scholars alike. Those of you of the local stories will take a short break and will be back with international news. Stay tuned.
Oman's largest online supermarket now has no minimum order limit. From grocery to household items, Rafiq has everything that you want. Enjoy worry-free shopping with over 8,000 products to choose from and get it delivered straight to your doorstep. Rafiq, you order, we deliver. Welcome back to Midday Update, now for the international stories. Cambodia and India are exploring direct flights between the two countries, which are historical linkages dating back centuries. To travel to Cambodia from places in India, currently people have to take a connecting flight to a nearby country like Singapore, Malaysia or Thailand. Talking to media persons under the India-Asian Meeting Exchange Program on the sidelines of the Asian Summit meetings, Cambodian Information Minister Kyo Kanharit said that they realized that there is an issue of connectivity and that talks are underway for establishing direct air connectivity to Indian cities, New Delhi and Bodh Gaya with Phnom Penh. The minister said that there was already an agreement in place for Thailand and Vietnam in which people who have a visa from either country can come to Cambodia and likewise, those who have a Cambodian visa can travel to those two countries. During Jabdik Jankar's recent visit to Cambodia for the Asian India Commemorative Summit to commemorate the 30th anniversary of relations between India and Asian, the Vice President of India inaugurated and threw open the Hall of Dancers at the Thar Pran Temple in Siam Reap, which has been restored by the Archaeological Survey of India. The agreement for direct flights between the two countries was reached in 2021 during a meeting between the Cambodian Minister of Tourism, Tong Khon, and the Indian Ambassador to Cambodia, Devyani Uttam Khobragre. Jaspal Singh, an Indian entrepreneur who has established a pharmaceutical business in Cambodia, said that when the Indian community heard about the proposal for direct flights, there was much enthusiasm. The introduction of direct flights will enable people to offer Cambodia as a tourist destination and make travel even more affordable. It will also enhance joint efforts to boost people-to-people -people connectivity, which is key priority of the Indian government's Act 8 policy. Turkey's Interior Minister Suleiman Soylu on Monday said that the person who planted the bomb on Istanbul's Istiklal Street that killed at least six people has been arrested, according to sources. In the Istanbul attack, at least 81 people were injured when an explosion rocketed the busy pedestrian streets. Turkish Vice President Fuat Okte called it a terrorist attack. We consider it to be a terrorist act as a result of an attacker whom we consider to be a woman detonating the bomb, he was quoted as saying. The blast occurred on the pedestrian st street near Istiklal on Sunday afternoon. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said that the death toll from the explosion rose to six. Turkish Justice Minister Baker Bozdak said the CCTV footage shows a woman sitting on a bench for more than 40 minutes and then getting up one or two minutes before the explosion, leaving a bag or plastic bag behind. He further informed that earlier a woman who was suspected of being involved in the attack was kept in custody. There are two possibilities. Either that bag or plastic bag has a mechanism in it, it explodes on its own or someone detonates it from afar. All of these are currently under investigation, he added. The name of the woman is unknown, he said. All the recordings and data about the women are being analysed. The blast occurred on the pedestrian tourist street Istiklal on Sunday afternoon. According to preliminary data, the city's governor, Alia Yerlikya, said that four people were killed and 38 were injured as a result of the blast. According to the information that I have received from the city's governor, the death toll is six people at the moment and the number of injured is 53, Adogan told a briefing. The president added that preliminary information indicated that the blast was a terrorist attack. Prime Minister Narendra Modi would have several bilateral interactions with world leaders at the G20 summit in Indonesia and brief them on India's evolving G20 priorities, Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatre said on Sunday ahead of Prime Minister Modi's trip to Bali. Addressing a special media briefing on Sunday, Foreign Secretary Quatra said that Prime Minister Modi will review key elements of bilateral engagement with these world leaders on the margins of the Bali summit. On the sidelines of the Bali summit, Prime Minister Modi would have several bilateral interactions with the G20 leaders to brief them, of course, on India's evolving G20 priorities, as also to review key elements of bilateral engagement that with these world leaders, he said. The Foreign Secretary said India's G20 presidency hopes to provide new strength, direction and perspective to G20 discussions on diverse subjects including green development, lifestyle for environment, digital transformation, inclusive and resilient growth and women-led development. 
More importantly, he said India intends to give a greater voice to the global south in issues of international economic cooperation as also in the need for reform 21st century institutions. Prime Minister's upcoming visit to Bali starts today on Monday. During the summit, Prime Minister Modi and other G20 leaders will deliberate extensively upon key issues of contemporary rele relevance, including the state of global economy, issues relating to energy, environment, agriculture, health and digital transformation. During his visit to Bali, Prime Minister Modi will also address and interact with the Indian community and friends of India and Bali at the Indian Community Reception on November 15th. The Indian community and diaspora have a strong presence across Indonesia. The Prime Minister will depart Bali on November 16th at the conclusion of the Bali Summit for India. Those were the international stories. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with sports news. Stay Oman's largest online supermarket now has no minimum order limit. From grocery to household items, Rafiq has everything that you want. Enjoy worry-free shopping with over 8,000 products to choose from and get it delivered straight to your doorstep. Rafiq, you order, we deliver. Welcome back to Midday Update, now for the sports news. The Portugal international and Manchester United forward Cristiano Ronaldo has hit out at his team and manager Eric Ten Hag, saying he has no respect for the manager. Ronaldo, who has made only four Premier League starts this season at Old Trafford, has revealed how dissatisfied he has been with life at the Premier League club. I don't have respect for him because he doesn't show respect for me. If you don't have respect for me, I'm never going to have respect for you, he said with regard to Ten Hag in an interview with Pierre Morgan. Ronaldo also stated that he felt he had been betrayed by Manchester United and blamed for everything that has gone wrong at the club, pushing him to feel like a black sheep. After the forward was benched by the Red Devils in the match against Tottenham before the end of regulation, Ten Hag has already dropped Ronaldo this season. Therefore, it is not a stretch to argue that Ronaldo may have already played his final match for the Red Devils as a result of this provocative remark. The 37-year-old star player is set to link with the Portugal squad for the FIFA Qatar 2022 World Cup. The team's first game is against Nigeria on November 17th. Adelaide has been confirmed as the host for Australia's first Live Golf League event. The Government of South Australia, SA and Live Golf on Monday announced the Grange Golf Club in Adelaide's northwestern suburbs will host the golf tournament from April 21st to 23rd, two weeks after the US Masters. The 38 million Australian dollar tournament will be part of the 14-event 2023 Live Golf League. Peter Molinowski, Premier of South Australia, said beating Sydney and Brisbane to win hosting rights was a major coup for the state. This is exactly what economy needs as we emerge from the pandemic, in particular our hospitality sector, which has done it tough over the past couple of years, he said. Live Golf will bring some of the world's best golfers to SA for an event that likes of which our country has never seen before. Those are all the local, international and sports stories for the day. For more updates, stay tuned and keep watching TTV. You've just heard the live feed from the TTV studios on TFM 95.4. Let's talk.